Hello again. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm in the middle of getting ready for a show, which I'm little, running a little bit late, so I decided to put the camera on now so I wouldn't miss out on the chance to do this video. So, anyway, this video I've been wanting to do for a little while. Um, I just wanted to articulate my thoughts and gather my opinions about what I feel about this. Because um, it's, really, it's not really a big deal, but it's just my opinion on what is going on right now in the world. So, um, basically, <laughs> I made a post on Facebook and it was like, RuPaul's Drag Race fans done fucked up RuPaul's Drag Race. And it was kind of like a nod to Jazz and Masters, RuPaul's Drag Race that fucked up drag. That's kind of what my mentality was, but not the show fucking up drag. It was mainly just mm, the fans of the show fucking up the experience of watching RuPaul's Drag Race nowadays. So I want to do this video because, um... I felt strongly about it, and I've been feeling this way for a while. Like, there was no distinct moment or event that made me think this way. It's always just been the kind of thing in the back of my head, but now it's more with the um, upcoming Season 11 coming out. It's just kind of took me over the edge. So, I'm going to just kind of explain to you what my experience has been as a fan of RuPaul's Drag Race over the years, because I've been watching since Season 1, like, when it started. I was just getting out of high school when Season 1 came out in, I think, 09. Um, so it's been around for a while. Um, I, I first saw the ad for it on a website called Downlink, which was kind of like a MySpacey social media site for like gay bi people who were down, you know, like not not everyone was down, which was like uh, people who were in the closet still, but it was just a gay site, um, you know, before Adam for Adam and all that stuff was around. It was just it was really just a social media site you can chat on and add friends and stuff like that. It didn't really go anywhere though, but um, so I think it was um, sponsored by Logo though. So on the banner, you have the advertisements on the top and the bottom of the website. There was uh, an advertisement for a new TV show on Logo called RuPaul's Drag Race, and it had the whole cast of season one, um, you know, posing with their little, um... Because back then they still played up the whole drag pun thing, the, the drag race pun, so they're all decked out in, like, uh, pit crew, like, you know, jumpsuits, drills, things like that. It was all themed that, you know, around, like, drag racing. Well, basically I watched it through the Downlink player, because you can watch it on Downlink. So I watched the whole season on that. I for It came out in episodes, so I only saw it as it was coming out. I didn't watch the whole thing. I didn't binge watch it. I watched it every week. And I was like, oh, this is really interesting. But I wasn't interested in, like, makeup or drag. I didn't know what drag queens really were, other than, you know, people you see, like, on TV or things you saw on, um, you know, Parade. When you think of Pride, you think of, like, drag queens, and they're kind of big, and they're, you know, lady bunny kind of looking, like, big hair, clowny looking, you know, men in wigs. And then, then the show, RuPaul's Drag Race, um, really opened my eyes to what drag can be and what it really is. Season 2 comes around a year later, and uh, this is what really got me into the show for sure, for sure. Because this is the season Raven was on, Jujubee, all those people. And it was still kind of low budget at the time. Um, I was surprised because at the end of season 1, they kind of made it sound like RuPaul is going to retire, and the next drag superstar would take off and be the next RuPaul. Like, that was going to be the thing. Because at the very end, if you watch season one, you would know that she told BB, congratulations, basically something, something. I passed the reins on to you, my dear. Something, something. So it was kind of the idea that it was the only season they were going to do, and um, RuPaul was going to step down for being, you know, a drag superstar of America, and BB was going to be the next thing. And season two came out, and that one was successful. It wasn't mainstream. Only me and my friends knew about it. People who watched Logo knew about it, um, etc. Not many people watched it. Not people were into drag yet still. It was still kind of weird to be a drag queen then. Season three came out, and Manila Luzon, Raja, all these big name people. And this was the year I got into makeup. And... <clears throat> So if you remember, if you've been with me for a while, uh, my first Drag Race look was based on Manila Luzon's makeup. This It was shitty. If you look back, it's still up. It's really ugly. Um, but Manila actually reposted my video, and I got a little bit of attention from it. I got a little bit of momentum. Um, long story short, I did a whole bunch of these series of videos of Drag Race-inspired makeup videos that no one was really doing at the time. I was basically writing the coattails of these famous queens through my YouTube. And for me, my YouTube videos were more like my fan mail that I would, like, hope they see. If they look up their name on YouTube, they would see me. And then, like, that would be my way to be like, I love you, you inspire me, blah, blah, Manila, and later on was Raven and all these people who were, like, big influences on me and my start of drag. 
Manila Luzon, Sharon Needles, and Raven are like the, the trifecta of like what made me do drag. Because the following year, season four, is when I actually got into doing drag. And I didn't even think about it prior to that. I was like, I don't know if I can even do that. I don't know if I want to risk my masculine outlook and all these things, because I wasn't really masculine anyway. But, you know, like, when you do drag, well, when you did, I don't know about now, but before, it's like, if you do drag, you kind of have to accept the fact that you are c cutting your dating life chances in half a little bit. Because <laughs> if someone here is drag queen, they're not exactly into that, because, you know, this is when Mask for Mask started coming out. Anyway, long story short, I did drag first time, and I loved it, and I got to do it, and if you watch me through YouTube, I got it. Like, my life had changed, my passion had changed from dancing, I was a dancer at one point, into doing drag. That was my passion. So, ultimately, Ru RuPaul's Drag Race had gradually affected me and changed my life. It made me semi-relevant on YouTube at the time. It wasn't big or anything, you know. When people started noticing me, drag queens would post my stuff. Sharon posted it, tweeted me. Alaska, all these, like, girls, you know, this is before, like, season... Probably before season seven, I think I stopped doing them then. Um, so this was, like, a big deal for me. Like, this literally changed my life. Like, look at me now. Like, I'm doing this, talking to you, getting ready for a show, because RuPaul's Drag Race inspired me to change my life. For the good. I've been doing drag for like, you know, six years, and I never tell, I'm never ashamed to tell people like, oh no, I got, I got into drag because of Drag Race, and Drag Race inspired me to do drag and do it properly. And over the years, me as a fan watching the show has changed a bit because I don't watch it so much as a TV show fan anymore. I watch it as a person who wants to be on that show, but I still love to watch it. In the last couple years, I've never not been a drag queen, so I always think of it like my perspective of the show through the eyes of another drag queen. So my perspective is a little bit different and I forget that people who watch Drag Race aren't all drag queens because I think in the early days if you did drag you'd watch Drag Race and that was it and then if you, or if you disliked you know um, drag culture you'd watch it and um, it wasn't really a mainstream thing even in the gay community it wasn't really like a you know gay people didn't watch it all the time but it was kind of like a cult, a cult following. Ten seasons later we're at season Ten. And over the years, there's been things that fans have done that kind of throw off the experience of Drag Race. Like, I used to get together with my best friend, we'd watch it, we'd talk about it, we'd do all this stuff, and be really exciting to watch, really juicy drama stuff, you know? And um, it's exciting, it's one of the, it's my favorite TV show. Season three is when, you know, people started watching it, I think, um, a little bit more. It wasn't until season four and five is when it really blew up. But that's when they started posting rumors and leaks that Raja had already won before the show was even done because they pre-filmed it back then. And there are some people who were like, oh, whatever, well, Raja's going to win anyway. And I'm like, uh, how did you possibly know that? You know, I didn't know that you can do that. Yeah, no, you can look up spoilers like that, you know. Spoiler alert wasn't really a thing at the time. <laughs> and since then, it's just gotten worse to the fact that they had to film the finales live. You know, they had to film three different endings. And then whoever ends up winning will know the night it airs. So not even the winner knows until the day the episode airs. And I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. That's safe. And so far, in the last probably six or seven, you know, season, I don't know why, but people just love to know every little fucking detail about Drag Race before it even has finished filming. They want to know who's on the season. They want to know what happened, who goes home in what order, who wins. Speculating about who you want to be on the show is one thing, but like consciously like going and finding spoiler leaks and posting it publicly like this is the person who's going to be in the cast this season. I'm just going to fast forward it to season 11. Someone already leaked the cast for season 11. It's all over Facebook. They posted a picture of Untucked on Facebook also and I'm not going to say who's in it or who in the cast because if you if you are like me and you like to wait and be excited for stuff don't go on Facebook. I don't blame any people on my friends list to reblog this or repost this stuff and they're just you know they're commenting about it but for me it's just like I don't see the purpose of having to know something before it happens a year in advance. Like, we're not going to see the show for another 10 months or so. So, I don't see the purpose. There's no purpose for it. And spoilers are just stupid. Like, I don't know. It's one thing to, like, spoil a movie because it's a movie. You have something like Drag Race that, you know, it's a pop culture phenomenon. Changing lives, because I know I'm not the only one. These people have to just ruin it and just make it, like a big deal. I'm not even talking about the fans being like angry at 
um, people and sending death threats and racist comments. Like, that's its own thing. That's a whole other video. I've always hated spoilers, and I've always been very vocal about hating spoilers, especially with Drag Race and things like that. But, like, people were, more, like, more respectful about Avengers Infinity War spoilers, and then everything. It's a superhero movie, but then when it comes to just, like, you know, a drag queen TV show, they have to know all the details. It's just so stupid. You know, I feel bad for people who are getting to the show now that have to deal with all these spoilers and stuff and not enjoy it the way I enjoyed it. Because when I was younger, it was fun. It was not as serious and it was more lighthearted and whatever. But now it's all about like who's the most brandable and getting who's going to win and who's going to be top four and blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't know. Like, I mean, I, I have my thoughts about who should win, who shouldn't win, who shouldn't have won, who should have won. And who deserved to be Miss Congeniality and all that stuff. I'm kind of lagging behind on my makeup. But I've never, like, had to go out and look it up and then be like, oh, uh, well, too bad. They lost anyway. They go home, episode two, and whatever. And it's not always the internet's fault. Sometimes if you've ever, if you're a performer and you've performed with drag queens from Drag Race, you should probably know that um, they're very open about talking about behind-the-scenes stuff. And they'll tell you things if you ask them, like upcoming things. Like I remember when I worked with Ivy Winters a few years ago in Modesto, she was telling us about the whole season six, the whole two episode premiere thing. Oh, that's, that's cool. I mean, it's exciting, but it just like ruined it. Like it ruined the surprise. Like it ruined the effect of it even being a cool thing because I knew it was happening. And not that she was going around telling everybody that, but I'm just like, you know, no one really has like a sense of like, oh no, you can find out and be excited when it comes out and then, you know, be surprised when it comes out too. And like, just because you know what's going on doesn't mean to tell everybody. I know people who are on the season can't do that, but still. That's my opinion. This is more just like a rambling talkie video. Um, basically, I mean, I'm not giving any kind of intellectual um, value to this conversation at all, but it's just one of those things where, I don't know if anyone else knows this also or, anyone else feels similar to this, I've, like, I've expressed this a lot over the couple, last couple of years, but it really has kind of just, the last thing that was, like, the last straw was the whole, like, season 11 cast being, like, spoiled without, like, it's just so stupid. I understand if you love the show so much, you want to know everything about it, and you don't want to be the first one to know everything, you want to be a stan as soon as possible, but it's like, you can't just enjoy what we have already, like, season 10 isn't even over yet. It's like, this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> I don't know. It's just weird to me. I still love the show. I still respect the show. And I still want to be surprised by it. I still want to be excited for it. Despite everything I've heard about it and everything like that, like, I still want to be on the show. And when I get on the show, I'm going to keep all the secrets. Don't give a shit who's asking me. Be excited. I want to milk that shit the legit way. And if anyone who even supports me is about spoiling things like that, that's not cool with me. Just be excited for shit. Just enjoy it as it comes out. I don't know what else is... I don't even, I don't even know what the final thoughts are about this. It's just basically... I just want to show you guys like my story and how, how much like a TV show has affected people's lives. Well, at least mine. I just wish that people would just appreciate it for what it is and not dive in so deep and ruin it for everyone else because I'll say it again I said it before but I'll say it again if you know spoilers and you post spoilers you're not special you're not contributing anything special to the world just because you know things first doesn't make you special you're just an asshole that doesn't know how to wait for shit to come out and enjoy it and be surprised. I can't remember last time I was legitimately surprised by something on TV or a movie because people always spoil that shit. And if you shoot an arrow and it goes real high, hooray for you. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video because I'm running really late. <laughs> I'm supposed to be gone in like 15 minutes, but we'll see. Well, I'm not gonna be done in 15 minutes, but I'll see you guys later. I love you guys. Bye.